I love how only the middle fan turns when it's like booting up. Anyways, it's that time. We're gonna start talking about overclocking. Cause you know, with these big old giant coolers and stuff that are available, why the heck not? So there's a few things that are actually kind of different this time around when it comes to the overclocking logic and that's specifically because of the new PCI Express or PCI SIG um, specifications for PCIe Gen 5.0 power cables. I want to kind of show you guys uh, sort of the new methodologies for overclocking and see where we can land on the leaderboard. Today's video is brought to you by the j Sense merch store. We got t-shirts and gaming mats and mugs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go buy our stuff, we don't have to put other ads here and other annoying crap. So go buy our stuff. Uh, so we use Port Royal for this because it's it is the um, the ray tracing benchmark, and with these ray tracing cards and stuff, you know it's obviously important to uh, really push them because you can be stable with rasterization performance versus RT performance are very two different two different figures. I can actually push this card in RT to almost twenty two hundred or thirty two hundred megahertz. It's weird to say thirty two hundred megahertz, but in Port Royal it's like. 30, 40, something like that. But anyway, let's see where we are on the leaderboard right now because people have been out here doing things. Um, all the while, I'm all the way down to 12th right now because I was actually up to seven yesterday because of the fact that um, not that many people have their cards yet, even though the whole list is 4090s now. So far, it looks like it's just me that's jumped on here. So we have to get really creative because the whole logic behind the overclocking this time is completely different in terms of where our limits are. So our limits, as we showed you already in the review, our voltage, it's voltage limited, not power limited. Usually what we would hit is a power limit prior to being voltage limited, which means to get more frequency, we had to get more limit to our power. So if we're only allowing, let's say 450 watts to the card and we're not maxing out our voltage to get that frequency, if we can up the voltage at the same power limit, we get more frequency. But the problem is if we have power, if we are voltage limited, we are now purely limited by how much frequency can we get at the supplied voltage and power not even being part of the equation. And that's where we are today. Um, one thing about the Strix card is it's a dual BIOS card and there's a Q mode and a P mode. So there's a quiet mode and a performance mode technically. But the difference on this card now is the performance mode also unlocks 600 watt max power draw. On the standard uh, BIOS or the Q BIOS, uh, which would technically was quiet, it's a four or 500 watt. So it's a 100 watt difference. So it's a 50 watt uplift over the FE already out of the box. It's got this giant vapor chamber on here. Um, both of the um, BIOS are, are sound optimized. So just wanna point that out. So on here on the Strix card, we are running a 600 watt max power limit. Again, voltage limited. But one of the things I like to do when I'm starting to play around on here is the people that are above me, it's like, what are their settings? So if I look at mine, I had a 28,025, my core clock was 3,075 and my memory was 14,094. So I wanna see right now like the people that are in like first place. 30,000 points already. He is 3360 and his temperature minus 35. This is actually where the temperature bottoms out. The sensors stop reporting under minus 35. So this is for sure an LN2, at least a dry ice run, but guaranteed an LN2. At 3360 megahertz, I have to assume there's gonna be some sort of a shunt mod that he's done to uh, apply more voltage because of the fact that the, I don't see 3360 even at cold temps happening necessarily with the stock 1.1 volts that are available to it. What would BPS Customs do? 28316, he was, again, Founders Edition card. There is a lot of Founders Edition cards. There's a frequent, sorry, I know you're panning back to me, 1500 megahertz on the memory. The score in Port Royal scales heavily with RAM. So the faster you can get the GDDR6 to run without error correcting, the higher your score will be. In fact, prioritize RAM overclocking for these before core overclocking. All right, let's just go ahead and do a run here. So I'm using MSI Afterburner, although GPU Tweak 3 is updated for this card specifically. In fact, there's a lot of functionality of this card um, that you get accessed through their utility from ASUS, which is gonna be the RGB control. Probably, I believe they even said more finite clock control. I'll probably mess around with that, but today, just to try and get myself farther up in the leaderboard, I'm going with something I know, which is specifically MSI Afterburner. Basically what I'm saying is go full voltage all the time, and that's enabled here. Unlock voltage control, unlock monitoring, and force constant voltage. It will go to the 1.1 volts or 1100 millivolts, and it will just stay there. And that's what I want because having wavering voltage 
is not good because if it comes down slightly right as the clock jumps up because the clocks might, if the load drops like in between a scene and the clock comes up real fast and the voltage goes down, that's a crash, guaranteed. If you understand cars, think of it this way. It's like if you're on the dyno in a boosted application and your voltage or, or your fuel pump is fluctuating on the fuel pressure and you drop below that safe mark, what happens? Detonation and it's bad, right? We, same thing happens for the graphics card and we don't want that. But just to kind of show you how crazy it is right now, why have I power limit at 90? That's weird. If I hit 100, right, nothing happens. If I go to 120%, so that's 100, that's 100 or 20% over 500, by the way, that gives us 600. Because what's 20% of 500? It's 100. So 100 plus 500 is 600. And they're not exceeding the 600 watt on the cable right now. But if I want to find where our memory starts to freak out, check this out. 1,450 on the RAM right there. 1,450, that's nuts. So if I go 1,500, it probably start artifacting at 1,500. So let's go 1,550 on the RAM. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, it's really hard to see, but it's sort of all over the screen, kind of flickering. See it? It's getting worse as we go. Oh, there we go, okay. So I already know this particular RAM kind of freaks out. Uh, at above 1450, which kind of sucks. I feel like I'm gonna try like 1460. Remember 30 series? We talked about the fact that the power slider or the voltage slider was a placebo. 1050. That's the like FE voltage right there. But watch if I max out the, the core voltage. We actually get 50 extra millivolts and that matters. Clock speed here will go to, no, we'll go 190. And then here we will go 1450. Just see where our scores land. This is what basically got me just over the 28,000. Oh, uh, there was crap all over the screen. Yeah, it clearly did not like those particular settings. It reset the driver. All right, so we finally got to run to validate. Oh, geez, yeah. Well, it's about 50 point or 100 points low. I'm gonna go 1455 on the memory and I'm gonna go 165 on the core. So while this is going, let's see if it'll start. Let's talk about some of the logic here regarding overclocking 40 series. I've already, I've already said that RAM overclocking and specifically Port Royal is king. The highest RAM clock that you can get without it having to error correct will get you the biggest improvements in score. So my approach to this, and the people that are above me may be doing this entirely differently, but my approach to this is max out the RAM then start pulling up the core clock as far as you can and find where it's no longer stable. Because when I found maxing out the core clock and then bringing up the RAM and having the RAM overall stop at a lower, lower number was not getting me these scores. So RAM was king. All of this though, at the end of the day, is very minimal on your actual gaming impact. It's like drag racing graphics cards. Like how fast can you go? Why? Well, why not? I feel like some of the, some of the other things I'll need to explore here are repasting. Steve recently showed that with the contact paper that a lot of the mounts are crooked. Not by crooked, I mean there's more pressure on one side than the other and you know with L and two overclocking, that's a death sentence for getting any sort of stability. Okay, so that just passed. But you can see we are not gaining anything. So I bet you, the 1455 was negligible where nothing happened. And the 165 may not have actually gotten us another, oh, we got one bin. So we went from the previous run right, right there at 3030. Starts at 3060 to a 3045. So I'm gonna go 175 now. But I'm kind of starting to feel like this card at its current temperatures is sort of maxed out. Cause you can find too, by keeping the card colder with the same settings sometimes gets you a better score. Even though you can see the core clock isn't fluctuating, it, it does somehow scale to a better overall performance, probably on the memory side, honestly. Because the colder we can keep the memory, the better it will perform. Okay, see, so we gained 10 points. Uh, if I look here, we might actually be error correcting on the memory. Okay. We are chicken walking our way up. Vince would be so disappointed. I'm gonna save these settings where they are. It's a plus 190 on the core, plus 1,450 on the RAM, the RAM. And if I save that, it means I can just pick up right where I left off. Now we gotta pull out the air conditioner. So because time is a concern today, I'm not gonna be making my typical cardboard masterpiece. I am just gonna be blasting air right at it from the AC. And I'm gonna let it get nice and chilly. Just let it blow right at the card. And then we will fire up the card and just go for it. 
Ooh, that, that's actually got like, I don't want to say condensation, but it's got that kind of like a slight misting happening on there because of the, I guess it's condensation because it's so cold. Um, but I found this, so I looked at my box of LN2 parts and I'm like, is the bracket the same? Yes. <laughs> Just take my word for it. Move your head. <laughs> it's exactly the same size. So what does that mean? We can go right to LN2 testing. Not today, I don't have any LN2 on hand, but we can go to LN2 testing to bring the temps way down to see what happens. So if I fire up Afterburner, what is the temperature of the card at right now? 13, so that will help <laughs> a bit. Uh, settings are loaded. Remember, this is where it crashed on us. So maybe, there we go. Oh, oh, no. that, oh that was bad. that's core though. That's core doing that, not memory. Oh, I bet you I know why. I, I figured it out in my own brain. Because it's so cold, when we were hitting that 30, 60, 30, 45, remember it shoots up and then comes down to that. So I think because of the temp curve right now, it's going way higher than where I'm setting it. So 180 is actually much higher because I'm getting the whole 180. So there's something very interesting happening here. Um, the colder I got the GPU, the less it wants to run at the speeds at which I've had it running before. <laughs> right now it's insta-crashing. I can't, I've never experienced an issue where lowering the temp causes a problem. But I might just have to break out of my, but the clocks are down mentality and just run it colder at a slightly lower clock and see what happens. Because there are people above me on the leaderboard that are lower clocks. So I gotta break out of that, the old habits die hard thing. Yeah, see if I'm looking at the starting FPS right now, it's higher by me dropping the clocks than it was warmer with higher clocks. So that, that's gotta mean something else is happening. So maybe the memory being colder, because I, I dropped the memory from 1450 to 1400. So maybe the lower temps is just giving better performance at a lower clock speed. But it's like that logic doesn't jive in my brain, but my brain is also my brain, so you never trust it. Okay, so we completed. That's a start. <laughs> I just need to see what the score is and what the clocks are. Yeah, see, that's already my highest score. Because I had a 28,040 like, or something like that before. So what are our clock speeds? 3045. And that's my highest score, and that's lower frequency. Oh yeah, 28. 061. Oh, I'm what I hate when I was one point. It's always a point. Ugh. Can I just say that so many people get confused over the errors of fluid and being freaked out? It's fluid does not mean liquid. So I have resorted to giving GPU Tweak 3 a shot. Only because Asus highly recommended it in their email. And yes, they're always gonna recommend their product but apparently very similar as to how EVGA Precision would work in a very specific way with their cards versus just general support. MSI is just a general support for scanning sensors and being able to move sliders that show available in the VBIOS. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again with GPU Tweak 3 to see if there's anything else in those settings that maybe will give me an edge over MSI Afterburner. I should have probably done that two hours ago, but you know, I'm stubborn. So it does appear like I'm actually getting a little bit more granular control and uh, the FPS is definitely looking higher. So I actually have both running right now, which is not good for performance. I have MSI for better monitoring, but I wanna see <laughs> 28, 125. Okay, so I just jumped up like Four spots right there. I don't know how or why, but the card is more stable with GPU Tweak 3 running. I mean, it's designed to talk to its own card, right? So 3060 was the average, because remember it drops down. 1487 on the memory, so I feel like I need to push this RAM. If I get, can't get to 1500, I'm not gonna get to where I need to be. Oh, right at the end, no. Don't crash, I mean, was it enough? If it passes, it passes, as long as all the, the majority of the car crosses the line, right? At the end, it just like completely borked itself. Okay, I mean, it's a little bit lower, but hey, we were getting a little bit of artifacting, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring the RAM back, just like a couple of clicks. So I, I pulled the RAM back, and this is what's happening, but I have a feeling that that's because of the, the previous weirdness that you guys saw. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna restart the system. Yeah, we're just crashing left and right now. So we're gonna call it right here for the Strix. We were able to get 28,125 today. 
Uh, I need to throw the FE on here though because I'm really curious as to with MSI Afterburner if I can get voltage unlocked or voltage slider control on this to max force voltage. If I can, I just want to see where I can get that founder's card, founder's card to land and after like a dirty run and then we'll just see where we end up. All right, so we do have voltage control. So this is plus 1525 on the RAM. So the RAM, the RAM in the FE card is better than what's in the Strix in terms of overclockability right now. Oh, did I get BPS Customs? Please. Brian, I love you, man, but you gotta go down. I just spent two hours with the Strix card and I just did one run with the FE and shattered that score. Um, Okay, Hall of Fame, 28356. Yes, I am gonna be in fifth place. So from not on the board, to 18th place, to seventh place, to 12th place, to fifth place. Okay, so what was my core clock? 3060, so that's all RAM. There's your proof, Port Royal, man. It's all about RAM. You've gotta push that RAM as far as you can. If this, test does, if this test passes, great. If it doesn't, I'm done. It's lunchtime. Our food is getting cold, although I got a salad, so it's already cold. I don't want to get it warm. So that was an insta crash at 3090. Um, whatever, you know, I'm fine with where we landed. It kind of makes me wonder now if I could potentially get with LN2 a better, um, I guess we just had to have a, ch a chat with DeBauer. Like what, what do we need to do on the 4090 to get you know he's already looking into this. Uh, Buildzoid could probably look at the PCB also and say, here's what you gotta do. But you know, we need to have a talk about this card right here. So the 4090 Strix, the cooler is phenomenal. Um, the core goes farther than the FE. I was able to push this one to like 3150 in like rasterization performance. Um, but the RAM doesn't overclock as far as what it does on the FE. We do know the FE cards are binned. We do know that they use like the highest quality round. These are using like SK Hynix or something. I haven't taken the cooler off, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, see, look at this. This is not, that's not working. So I'm gonna stop it there. I got it on the board. I'm happy with where we are. If you're not overclocking, you don't care about the leaderboard stuff that we're all playing around with. This is a $400 more card than that one. A lot of people don't like the red and the blue. Like I've asked people not to put color on their cards and ROG's like, hey, you know what? We're gonna put both. We're gonna put 180 contrast colors. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's a fantastic card because there's three 120 millimeter fans on it. But in terms of just performance, unless you're pushing it, it may not necessarily be worth it. So the FE card is, as of right now, the smallest card you can get. And ooh, that is chilly. I think, you know, maybe save your money, save the 400 bucks and buy a CPU with it. Or All right. AC. <laughs> or an air conditioner to get it colder. But there you go, guys. Overclocking. You know other, other um, YouTubers are gonna get on the board besides BPS Customs. Sorry, buddy, had to take your spot, but there's plenty of headroom right there for you to take it back. Let the wars begin.